So I don't know if you guys have been on or not, but 10 meters is wide open. This solar cycle is peaking early and it's peaking high. Um, I think 10 meters has been open most of the day, all of this week, and most of the night in fact. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, and you know, as we have more activity on 10 meters and it becomes more popular, you'll see a resurgence of some of the old modes like AM. Up at 29 megahertz, 10 meter AM springs back to life magically when we have solar cycle maximums. So we're definitely into the maximum years now, and I think uh, 2024 is really going to be peaking up. So you might remember last year I did a little series on a small peanut whistle transmitter for 10 meters. This little guy puts out two or 300 milliwatts, and it's suppressor grid modulated with a carbon mic. It's a single tube AM transmitter. Then I made a little linear amplifier for it using a 6146B tube that brought it up into the 5 or 10 watt output level. Now, uh, once you get into 10 meter AM, you see a whole bunch of older commercial rigs coming out of the closet, converted CVs, uh, junk box rigs, and uh, I wanted to do a classic junk box rig for 10 meters. Something that's high level plate modulated. I know that screen modulated transmitters are very popular on 10. Really with about four tubes you can do a beautiful screen modulated transmitter to get about 20 watts out fairly easily. But I'm thinking of more like a 35 or 40 watt high level AM plate modulated transmitter. A real junk box rig just on a big old chassis made with a few tubes now let's see if we can do some work on 10 meter AM. Our 10 meter AM transmitter consists of an oscillator running at 7.25, 9.67, or 14.5 megahertz, which can be a VFO, or better yet, a VXO based on a crystal, and we multiply these frequencies up to 29 megahertz. Then we amplify in the final to 20 to 40 watts out, depending on the tube we use and the transformer we have. So we have a constant carrier of 20 to 40 watts out of our junk box rig. The modulator consists of a microphone amplifier and audio power amplifier. The result is a modulated waveform on 29 megahertz. I say 29 megahertz because that's the AM calling frequency. AM QSOs can be heard usually on weekends in several spots up and down the band. They could be 100 kilohertz below or a couple hundred kilohertz above 29 megahertz. Why do I say 20 to 40 watts? Because we're really at the mercy of our power transformer, uh, what its voltage and current rating is, and it's never exact when we're talking about surplus and used transformers out of old amplifiers, radios, and TVs. Uh, if you use chokes or resistors to filter, that can change things too. Uh, this typical power supply schematic shows the topology that's most popular today. That is solid state rectifiers and replacing chokes with large resistors and using very much higher value capacitors to get the filtering we need on the high voltage. The choke shown could also be replaced by a large resistor, but a similar set of capacitors would need to be added to ground at the junction of D4 and D3 just before the filtering resistor that we substitute in. And the transformer would produce a different voltage with a cap input scheme compared to a choke input scheme. The rule of thumb is as long as the transformer has lots of current capability, such as a 250 milliamp transformer, you can usually get away with resistors in place of the chokes and the high voltage AC does not need to be as high with capacitor input because it takes advantage of the 1.414 multiplication factor. With choke input you basically get what you put in so it's more like a 1 or 1.1 1 .1 to 1 multiplication factor with a proper bleeder on the other side of the choke. So the choke input, let's say we had a 400 volts AC center tap transformer, it's going to produce 400 to 450 volts out. But in a cap input style, it might soar as high as 560 volts, 
minus any resistor drops. So closer to 500 to 550 volts DC with the same transformer. So depending on what type of transformer you have and what type of filtering you use, you're going to get more or less voltage out. The choke input allows a smaller transformer to work on voice peaks and its regulation will always be a little bit better than cap input. But you have to get the extra iron, that is, you got to find its choke. So I know these supplies can kill you, by the way, but I didn't know they were so complicated to predict output voltages. Next, I'm showing a typical tube lineup for the RF chain. We start with a VFO, or preferably a VXO, which is a variable crystal oscillator. Let you tune up and down a few tens of kilohertz. Then we multiply up to 29 megahertz with a driver multiplier stage, where the final amplifier brings us out to the 20 to 40 watts of carrier that we want. Using the driver as a simple multiplier does waste a little bit more power, but you don't have to neutralize the driver stage, which simplifies the construction. If you're just building a low power 15 watt exciter, you could use a smaller tube like a 2E26 or a 2E24 and modulate it with a pair of 6V6s. That would make a nice little exciter. However, if you want more output, 30, 40, 50 watts out, it's hard to beat a 6146 modulated by a pair of 6L6s, 6DQ6 sweep tubes, or even 807s. In this case, the transformer has to be able to deliver 80 milliamps for the final, maybe 80 milliamps on peaks for the modulator, and maybe 40 milliamps for everything else. So a 200 milliamp total output transformer would probably do the trick. You get the idea. Theoretically, you only need modulator power equaling one half the DC input power to the final. But uh, my junk box rule of thumb is once you factor in the PA efficiency, your transformer match, you probably should have a little extra power available in the modulator. And if you want more than 100% modulation, in other words, you want more upward modulation, you need to overdo it and just go with equal power. In other words, 30 watts out of RF, 30 watts of modulator power. Here's another circuit, a typical modulator that looks very much like any simple guitar or power amplifier schematic you might find in a, in a radio or in a PA system. The only difference is that we need a modulation transformer in place of the normal 8 ohm or 4 ohm output transformer. The best choice is a 1 to 1, 1 to 2, or 2 to 1 ratio modulation transformer. So let's say we find a 6000 ohm center tap primary that's capable of 30 watts modulation. And we have a 400 volt supply for the 6L6 modulators. The secondary would ideally be 400 volts DC divided by 80 milliamps for the final amplifier or 5000 ohms. So the simple topology and single supply working with a one to one ratio modulation transformer works out pretty well for our setup. But there are many variables and I presented a multitude of tube choices that could be made to work. And that might mean you might need to go 1 to 2, 2 to 1, 1 to 1. I even used an 829B dual tetrode with both halves tied together on 10 meters as a final amplifier. And it worked great. But that messed up the ratio. The transformer now had to be a 2 to 1 for best performance because of the lowered impedance of two final tubes in parallel. So here are a few modulator schematics that represent the typical 10 to 60 watt output lineups. Uh, these are all class AB except for the last one. Uh, tubes like the EL34 and the 807 can supply much more power than 30 watts, our target. Uh, you just have to have a higher voltage and a larger modulation transformer. Most of these are familiar designs found in hi-fi and guitar amps. And that last one is a Class B example that could modulate a pair of 6146s quite easily. We're not going for hi-fi here. We're going for audio power at modest distortion. So you're looking at a uh, chassis that's got lots of holes in it. Looks like this has been used for other projects before. It's a very holy chassis. And this is a good candidate for our 10 meter junk box. AM transmitter. 
So, oh, if you look in the old 73 magazines from the 1960s, and this one is from 1963, uh, you can see this one, uh, I think Wayne Green was kind of fooling around with the ARRL by making the front of his magazine kind of look like an old QST. That's clever. Anyway, he liked to poke fun. Uh, they had an article in here called The Complete Junk Box Station for Fixed Frequency Operation, which, you know, typically 10 meter AM is, was crystal controlled at this time. So it's a, you know, a complete article that takes you through not only the transmitter, but also the receiving converter. Here we have a kind of a basis for the transmit schematic. Looks like they're using a 5763 crystal oscillator and a 5763 multiplier going into like an 807, a 6146, a 2E26 or whatever in the final. And uh, this guy they are screen modulating with a clamp tube. It's a 6L6. So it's, uh, you know, it's 12AT7, 12AX7, 6SL7 speech amps, and then a 6L6 screen modulator. That is a nice, simple transmitter. I want to go a little further than this, though, and I would like to do a full push-pull, high-level plate-modulated transmitter for 10 meter AM. So I'm going to be using something like a 12AX7, some kind of driver tube, and maybe a pair of 6L6s with the modulation transformer. So that's a full-up hi-fi amplifier modulator. And I'm going to go for onboard power. So I'm going to stick a big old transformer on there. Right, and that's going to get us all the power we need for our junk box rig. And then I might even use that 6146 linear amplifier as the basis for the output, or the final, and just locate that in this area. So this will be the oscillator, this will be the multiplier driver, and then it'll go into the 6146. So three tubes for the transmit chain and four tubes for the modulator. Kind of a deluxe, high-level plate, AM modulated, 10 meter junk box rig. And I'm hoping to get out, say, 35 or 40 watts of high-level plate modulated AM. 